three months ago, I quit my job, and these are the three myths that almost kept me in my day job. Over the past few months, I've had some time to think about the big shift that I made when I left my day job. And as I reflected, I realized that there were internal narratives that I was telling myself to keep me in my day job longer. And so today I'm starting a new video series about my transition from traditional work. This is the first video of the series. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the three myths that I was telling myself that almost kept me in my day job. And be sure to stick around till the end because the third myth is one that I hear all too often. And I think many of you can relate to. Myth number one was that I had a good thing and I wasn't sure if I could replicate it. I told myself this quite regularly when I was working. And the fact is that I really enjoyed my job. I consider myself really fortunate to have a job that I enjoyed doing and that paid me well. But the thing is having a job that you enjoy and not wanting to leave is kind of like finding the last piece of candy in a candy drawer. Instead of enjoying it, you end up not wanting to eat it only because you're not sure when you can get more. It's the same concept that I was applying to my day job. I was convinced that I had such a rare and good thing that I wouldn't find anything better. What's really happening here is scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset is the belief that resources are limited or finite. And it's quite common for people to apply this belief set to a job. It's actually one of the most common reasons people stay in jobs, even though there are better options out there. And with enough energy and confidence, you can replicate a good thing. Because if you're in a job that pays you well and that you enjoy, the odds are that you can find another job very easily. And this is the, the script that I used to kind of reverse that narrative. I went from scarcity to abundance with this kind of internal shift. I no longer started talking about how difficult it would be to find another job, but what I could do if I needed to and how the options seemed quite plentiful. If you guys are liking this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Both of those things go a long way to helping us out. Thanks so much. Now back to the video. Myth number two is that walking away from a stable income is a really bad idea. Now I think this idea, or this myth, took root from my early childhood. I remember having a conversation with my dad who traveled a lot for work and how he explained that he had to stay in his day job because he had to provide for the family. And this was kind of a sure thing. Now, it's, it's not all my dad's fault. Um, I have come to appreciate having a stable income and having a stable income and a paycheck every other week or every month if you're paid monthly can be a really good thing. But for me, it was actually holding me back from pursuing other interests, including entrepreneurship. So instead of focusing on what businesses I could build or the potential of those said businesses, I was more focused on what I would lose. Again, this has very many similarities to the last myth, which is rooted in a mindset of scarcity instead of a mindset of abundance. The best analogy I have for this is that it's, it's kind of like eating peanut butter and jelly for lunch every single day. Think about finding a routine of eating a PB and J. It becomes part of your routine. You know how to make it and how to do it well. You also know what to expect the flavor, the feel of it in your hands, and also that it will meet your needs. You'll move on in your day with enough resources. But what you may not realize is that you're missing out on other possibilities, or at least I was. I was committing so much of my mental energy to my work that I was missing out on enjoying life. And so as I worked through this second myth, I realized that I needed to start focusing on the possibilities and the potential and not on what I was giving up.
Myth number three is that the timing wasn't right. And this can take a couple of forms. It's either that the stock market might take a downturn or that it's not a good time to be looking for a job. I graduated college in 2009 when it was probably the worst time to be looking for a job, let alone be looking for the your first job out of college. I think this experience really stuck with me, and I think it's the reason why many of us are afraid of what may happen based on external factors. In my experience, this is probably one of the most popular scripts or myths that I've heard. In fact, when I was telling people that I was leaving my job, I heard it a couple of times from those closest to me. This myth is actually what led me to set specific financial goals. And as we told you in our five year history to location independence video, which I'll link somewhere up here, we had two years of cash on hand when I quit my job. This was one of the financial goals is to have a significant amount of cash on hand. So that way, if we didn't earn any income from the business, we would be okay and we'd have a runway to generate more revenue. I also set a loose investment balance goal. Now I won't say what that is because the fact of the matter is we never reached the goal. I actually ended up quitting my job before we reached that ideal balance. This video is solely focused on the myths that almost kept me in my job, but in a future video I'll talk about the reasons that I actually pulled the trigger and quit my day job. I realize that with where we are financially, we don't need to be limited by external factors as much as we were in 2009. While we aren't financially independent, we do have a certain level of financial security that can afford us to take more risks. And that's what ultimately what we're doing. One of my biggest aha moments as I was working through this myth that the timing isn't right, is that there are things in life that prevent you from going backwards. There are safety nets. But often those things can also be the things that prevent you from going forward too. Just like these wheel chocks which are things that we use underneath the wheels when we're parked on an incline. And so as a way of analogy, we decided to remove the wheel chocks, to remove those things that were preventing us from moving forward and start again, stop focusing on what we would lose and start focusing on the possibilities and the potential. So those are the three myths that I had to work through as I was preparing to leave my job. It's definitely been a journey to get to where I am today. But working through those myths is the reason why I'm here today, packing up the van and getting ready for another day of adventure, instead of going into the office for another day of work. In the next video in the series, I'll go into in more detail the reasons why I quit my job and what gave me the confidence to pull the trigger when I did. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed and leave a comment below on which of these myths you can relate to. Thanks for watching and enjoy the journey. We actually have five years. No, it's not five years. So I was just about to hit record when this truck showed up. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes until I hit record again. <laughs>